We'll start off by talking about the the Fenrir team composition. Uh, we've gone with mages once again. And uh, just like the Hydra fight, we're using one of the six hit uh, Triumvirate mages with Adia instead of Maria this time. Uh, she's great and she does exactly what Maria did in the last fight. She gets an early entrust from Ferris and uh, uses her BSB. And, well, I guess there's a slight variation. Um, since Adia is allowed to, or because she has access to darkness abilities, she can Memento Mori at the start of the fight, which is an additional um, magic buff, which means she can skip her command too on her BSB. So she starts up the fight by using Memento Mori, and once she uses her BSB, she strictly uses her command one to the end of the fight, and that is it. Um, her record materia, for those who haven't seen it before, is uh, the World of Final Fantasy Rain character. I got her level 99, and she gives a plus 30% uh, thrown damage RM. And India is using Hope's OSB as her stat stick here, which is a thrown weapon, so it increases all of her BLK type damage by 30%, which is every single piece of damage she does is affected by that. Uh, what else do we got here? Nice set of Magicite down there at the bottom. Uh, completely ice-based. Uh, because there's not a whole lot of incoming damage in the fight, Aphma was able to easily heal it by herself, even though she's a lighter healer. Um, I just go completely offensive. Uh, I would prefer five completely leveled uh, Wendigos, but I do not have those. So I used a couple... Uh, is that Wing Raptor? No, not Wing Raptor. Um... Whatever, it's it's something that I would rather not be using, but I am. Um, I can talk about Lulu. Uh, in the unfortunate addition of Lulu to this fight, uh, not because she isn't strong. Taharka, thank you, bye, Hazmat. Um, Lulu is very strong, uh, with her USB, at least. Uh, the issue here is because... I know that Lulu's USB showed up on a banner that was actually pretty poor outside of Lulu's USB and uh, Riku's USB. So, um, and a lot of people that pulled on the banner would have pulled on it, and once they got Riku's USB, they would stop pulling. So, that would reduce their chances of pulling Lulu's. So, what I'm going to do with this composition is not going to apply to a whole lot of people. Um, it, it only does in the fact just realizing how strong Adia and in the previous fight, Maria, how strong they really are. Um, but those of you who do have Lulu's USB and either don't understand its strength or want to try to unlock it to its fullest potential, uh, this is the fight for you. Because while the last fight had um, Bartz and Maria, both which don't benefit a whole lot from being entrusted uh, past a certain point in the fight, because they just want to use their abilities and get all their damage in with their, you know, their chases or with Maria's six hit. In this case, Lulu um, will take every single piece of soul break you can generate for her and turn it into an immense amount of damage. Um, so she is, uh, she loves the entrust, and we're gonna see uh, exactly how much during the course of the fight. Uh, Ferris is doing the Shulk thing, where she just entrusts for the entire fight, and that is it. So I've got her equipped with my handy-dandy uh, Final Fantasy XIII um, Protect Dagger, which gives plus 10 defense and plus 10 resistance uh, to boost up her defenses, because she doesn't actually do any damage. And uh, Onion Knight, who is equipped with some utility and uh, light damage, uh, because my... Chamber Zaga is occupied by Lulu, and I don't feel like um, hold, you know, carrying a second one for Onion Knight to use in this fight. So Onion Knight uses Phantasm and his Command 2 from his Burst Soul Break. The Kirana is a optional. Uh, in the beginning of the fight, while I'm setting up defenses, if someone gets attacked twice instead of his uh, two first attacks uh, being distributed, between two different people, then that person is in danger of dying to his area of effect that he casts on his fourth turn. 
So that's when I need to use a Curata on, uh, on second turn with Onion Knight. But usually I don't have to use it. I do think I did use it in this fight, and I, I didn't have to. So we'll, we'll see. I'm pretty sure I, I played that incorrectly. But it's fine. It, Onion Knight really doesn't have a whole lot of impact on the fight. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get going. Uh, as usual, when Ferris is in the fight, we're going to be seeing her go first and Wrath first turn, uh, which means progression goes down from there because of the way I have settings. Uh, Onion Knight uses Burst, uh, Aphmau uses Protectica, uh, Lulu uses that four-star witch ability. I can never remember its name. I remember Sudden Thunder for Lightning, but I forget Lulu's, or the Ice one. And Adia uses Memento Mori. Uh, using Memento Mori on first turn is fine for Adia because we know the fight's not going to go past 30 seconds. If it does, I'm resetting anyway. So she uses that immediately because it'll at least increase the damage output of the 4-star Witch ability that she has in the second slot. Sudden Freeze. I, I don't know why I don't remember that because, you know, it's very similar to Sudden Thunder. Oh, and might as well talk about these because it's the first time I've used them. Uh, the four-star witch abilities are really nice for uh, mages that have trouble uh, building soul break, uh, like Lulu, like Adia, uh, mages that don't have access to uh, to wrath. So you use that instead because it makes them cast quickly, and uh, you know a benefit to that is once they do have the enough soul break uh, meter to use their soul breaks, then they cast them at half speed because of the way the four star witch abilities work. The next thing, that, the next piece of magic that they cast works at half speed. So it's actually really nice for mages like Lulu, Adia, Ash, Rafa. Maybe not Rafa because she's a buffer. Sometimes you probably want uh, Mako Might or Dr. Mark's teachings on her. And just as we did during the Hydra fight, the second turn for Ferris, which comes up quickly because of Thunder God status here, uh, is to entrust to the Scaling Mage, which is not Maria here, it is Adia. And from here on, we entrust exclusively to Lulu. Um, but the first entrust was to Adia because the faster she gets her BSB going, the faster she can be using her rock in command ones. Uh, you saw on second turn I used wall with Aphmau. Like I said, this is not a heavy damage fight. So Aphmau can spend two turns at the, at the start of the fight doing nothing. And even though she's a light healer, she still from that point on is really just fine healing the entire party. Lulu continues using her uh, her witch ability to keep generating quick soul great soul break gauge, and Adia moves to using her witch ability um, to do the same. Now that she's used Memento Mori on first turn, Onion Knight, like I said, used Kirada even though he didn't have to, um, because Aphmau's uh, BSB on the third turn is going to heal everybody, so that's going to be fine. Uh, the only reason he should use Kirada on second turn for me and my, the way I've work to the composition is in case somebody gets hit twice. Like if Adia had taken two hits, she'd be very low. And this uh, area of effect that Femir is going to do would have killed her on the fourth turn. That's the only reason Kirata was there was to prevent a fourth turn death. So I should have used his command two instead. And now with Ferris, after she's entrusted Adia, is going to do a one wrath in trust to Lulu because the faster she gets her USB going at this point, the better. Still sudden freezing on Lulu until she can use that USB. And here's that area of effect. Uh, important to note on Fenrir, um, my team doesn't do enough damage for me to get by using a uh, unicorn as my summoned magicite. 
I use uh, Wendigo instead to imperil the boss. But if I did do enough damage, and that, then I would use Unicorn, which would give me a status blank. Um, because I don't use status blank, I have to reset at this point until I do not... The, that area effect that Femir just did will slow. Uh, has a chance to slow people. Um, and I, I just, I can't afford to, I can't afford to use status resistance because everyone needs wind resistance. And I can't afford to use a status blink in the party because FMAO is providing a, a necessary magic buff. So uh, the margins are too thin for me to use status blink here. So I've got to reset until I don't get any slows. For this attempt, didn't get any slows. Um, let me see here. Onion Knight doing his thing yet again, uh, the third turn Magicite use. And as usual, because of the way I structure all of these teams, um, we get this going off just in time so that Lulu and Adia use their soul breaks and they take advantage of this, uh, this Magicite for the 20% in peril, increasing the entries of their soul breaks. And trust to Lulu. I do make a mistake on this attempt. Uh, see, Aphmau right here is casting her Burst Soul Break, which is a 30% uh, magic buff. So what I would like to do is make sure that that goes off before everyone uses their Soul Breaks. But I immediately hit Lulu's USB when it comes up here. And because it's ha casting at half, uh, you see Aphmau's cast time hasn't progressed past half yet. So what Lulu's going to do is her half cast time soul break is going to uh, go off before Aphmau's, and I'm going to lose about 8,000 damage, which uh, that's, uh, that's a fair amount of damage on a 30 second sub, or sub 30 second clear. But Adia's fine. Her cast is delayed enough. Uh, so from this point on with Onion Knight, uh, we're using Command 2 on him for the 8,000 damage a turn. Uh, or more than that, because he, he gets into cast after the, using it for the first time. And once his birth soul break runs out and he can't do it anymore, then he starts using Phantasm. Really just squeezing everything, every little piece of damage I can get out of him. Uh, ideally, what I would like to do here with Onion Knight is instead of carrying Phantasm on him, I would carry in Trust. Uh, and entrust everything that he's generated over the course of the fight to Lulu, because... The more Lulu gets, the better. Uh, but I have been hesitant to create a second entrust. Uh, you will probably not be as stingy as I am, and you may have a second or third entrust by now, because it is beneficial. It would allow me to do more damage with the composition. But since I was able to sub-30 it without using entrust, I consider that a victory. Okay, and now we get to uh, Lulu's USB and how to use Lulu's USB. Um, what her USB does is on entry, it does single target ice damage, gives her the N ice status, increasing her ice damage by 50% and her ice soul break damage by 80% and giving her two global uh, charges of instant cast. So ideally, what you would like to do with this USB is to cast it, on the first turn after casting, you use Chain Blazaga instantly. And then on the turn after that, you use USB again. Because, you know, the longer cast time on things, uh, when you have Instacast enabled, the better. Because, you know, their damage is generally weighted with its, uh, with its cast time. And if you can remove those giant cast timers, then you're increasing your damage output by a hell of a lot. Um, 
We're unable to do that here because we did need to get off a, a brief entrust to Adia at the start of the fight. So uh, Lulu will not be able to on her second turn after using USB to be able to use USB again. But we do have a remaining charge on the four star witch ability, Sudden Freeze. So we use that instead. And that's almost as good because we instantly cast that and we instantly give ourselves the uh, half cast speed buff or times two cast speed buff from Sudden Freeze for casting the USB the turn after that. So it's not, it's not the best case scenario, but it's still good. So that was her Sudden Blazaga turn. And now you see Adia is just command wanting now and that's all she does for the rest of the fight. And Ferris, who has been getting quick, you know, wraths and entrusts off, is now able to entrust over to Lulu, but it's not going to be ready in time. So what we do is we use that second charge of Instacast on Lulu on her Sudden Freeze instead. Which, because she has the NI status, does a heck of a lot of damage. Even though it's such a low multiplier. 9200 times 2, it's, that's fine. Onion Knight still using his command too. Aphmau at this point has her summoning status active uh, because she's able to do that regardless on any single, uh, any attempt. Uh, so she uses her command one, gives herself the summoning status, and then just uses command two for the rest of the fight. Adding in what little damage she can, which is probably like 3,500 a turn. Whatever, it's something. And see, now that she got entrusted last turn, she'll be able to half-cast time the Abaddon Blazaja USB this turn. And from this point on, then she doesn't have to worry about that again. She can use Chain Blazaga and Abaddon Blazaja at all opportunities. Because Ferris is solely entrusting to her. And you'll see when this USB goes off, why it's so potent and why it makes her such a good target for untrust. Because that's a lot of damage. That's eight hits of 9,300. Think about if you have, if I had Onion Knight also entrusting to her at this point, um, as well as Ferris being a soul entruster to Lulu and Lulu just US being for the entire fight. That is an easy, easy, easy sub clear, uh, sub 30 clear. You can sub 30 clear with just Lulu's USB in this fight, as long as you're willing to invest in uh, the Rads and the uh, Entrusts to get her there. Um, the fact, just having a Dia is what allows me to only use one Entrust in this fight. That's the difference. Just in case you are wondering whether or not you could um, you could duplicate this fight with just Lulu. You absolutely can. See, that's her off turn, where she casts a Chain Blazaga, which is a cool 20,000 damage. And because she has one more chain or charge of Instacast charged up and ready to go, and she just got entrusted to. She's able to USB this turn and get the chain started again. And it again does a pretty impressive amount of damage. And now we've actually uh, done so much damage at, the co po at this point of the fight that uh, there was some bad RNG here where Lulu didn't take a whole lot of damage during the fight, which means she didn't generate enough Soul Break Age to be able to use her USB one more time. Uh, we'll see that when her turn comes up. So she's going to um, she's going to Chain Blazaga for this turn and then Chain Blazaga again using both of her Instacast charges. Uh, during a better RNG attempt, she would be able to Chain Blazaga and then use her USB again, and that would be an easy clear. Um, but that's okay. 
because the D is there. And she can get off one more command one. which will end the fight. And that's that. So this is a hard to reproduce fight because of uh, the difficult to attain Lulu USB. But uh, though Lulu was a poor character up until this point, Uh, up until she got her USB, her USB changes everything about that and makes her uh, one of the strongest uh, ice mages in the game. Though there aren't many of them. Oh yeah, that's true, Nimrod. Uh, because Ferris is basically sharing Soul Break Meter with Lulu, uh, if it, Ferris had taken more direct hits, then that would have been beneficial as well. So that's just a rare attempt that uh, there, where things go as wrong as they did. But no slows. That is the important part for Femrir. <laughs> Getting slowed is the main issue. We did get some in the last wave, but that was okay. It's less important during the last uh, the last use of the Savage Wind than it is for the previous two. Does anybody have any uh, questions about that one? It is a sweet ice team. So a four hit buff for Chain Blazaga would give me enough damage um, over this team to swap out my... Um, my Wendigo for Unicorn, which would make the, the run more consistent in case I wanted to farm Magicite or farm uh, Wind Orbs. Um, because then I wouldn't have to worry about attempts where people got slowed as much. Uh, another thing that would change the a lot of the fight would be Shelk. Uh, using Shelk with her Haste and Instacast 3 Legend Dive would... Uh, such a better entruster than straight up Ferris, uh, which would increase my damage output by a lot. And it'll also allow me to use Unicorn instead of Wendigo. A deer Lulu, uh, who does more damage over the course of the fight? I believe Lulu. How quick do you think you'll be after pulling on the Zell Renault Fusion banner? Quick? I love that banner. Zell Renault and Fusion are all, you know, top tier stuff. Renault are the best of them. And from what I've seen in the four star Magicite, I'm going to need the best. Or at least give myself a shot at getting it. And Zell will probably be one of the best fire damage dealers for dealing with that Magicite. And Fujin, one of the best wind damage dealers for dealing with that one. And all three of them come with the elemental gear that enables their. They're USBs. It's just a really powerful multi-elemental banner.
And if you had asked me three months ago what I thought about Renoa, it would be, you either have her chain or you, you forget that she exists. Alright. Last 